Yo, Elliot, I actually have one question today regarding women and getting a girlfriend to be specific. I don't subscribe to blue pill shit, <laughs> okay? But I see using game as manipulative. Even Jordan Peterson describes pickup artists being similar to psychopaths since they use peacock effects to draw women in. Uh, and yet, I also don't believe they're saints as they should be treated according to how they treat me. In short, I have a healthy respect, but I'm also very weary of how crazy women can be, if I could put it mildly. I hear it's all about confidence, and it's why I've tried no fap and have been able to talk to them. I even had a short-term girlfriend during my last no fap streak last summer. However, I couldn't keep her, mainly because she was immature, but also because I wasn't taking care of myself because I thought it ended there. Oh, yeah, that's what happens. You meet a girl and you think, well, this is it. Life is over or I've begun a new life, right? So it ended there. <laughs> that's what men want, right? We want to come to a conclusion, right? I met her. That's it. So he goes on to say, I guess my real question is, where is the balance between taking care of yourself and being enchanted, as they call it? Or am I not even supposed to be enchanted at all? Furthermore, what can I do that I haven't tried already to find a high value woman? Well, let's talk about the enchanted part first. Um, it's not that you don't want to be enchanted, right? It's not that you want to avoid being enchanted. And I, when by that, I think you mean falling in love, you know, falling under the hypnotic uh, attraction of a woman. It's not so much the enchantment, it's your attachment to the enchantment, or better yet, believing in the enchantment. The enchantment is, is totally emotional. It's totally, it's very physical, right? What are emotions? Emotions are physical. You can't, that's why they're called feelings. You can't have an emotion if you don't have a body, <laughs> right? So emotions are physical. And so when you're enchanted, you basically the body is... Um, guided by the subconscious mind, right? In other words, the body does what it's going to do whether you think about it or want it to do it or not, right? Like your body just responds to like a fear, right? Like if you hear a loud noise, you can't help yourself, you jump, right? Well, it's the same thing if you see or you're, you're, you're with someone who is attractive to you, sexually attractive to you, that's just a body thing, it's just the body. It's just doing its thing. It's feelings, right? There's just energy moving through the body, right? And certain people, based on their vibe or your, uh, even your, your perception of that person, will give you different feelings, right? Sometimes you'll meet somebody that gives you a bad feeling. I, I don't know what it is, but there's a bad feeling. Now, you don't necessarily need to always believe that bad feeling because oftentimes our feelings are based on past experiences, right? And so there's sort of a pattern recognition that your subconscious mind, your, your primal, your reptilian mind tries to, um, tries to recognize so that you can avoid pain, right? So you can avoid mistakes. You could avoid uh, having a, a, the same experience again, right? So if you're around, a, this is how people become like, you know, afraid of people of different races, right? Like, and it happens with black and white people, right? Maybe you've had a bad experience, white people, right? or black people maybe had a bad experience with a white person, right? And thought they were racist. And then it was like, ah, oh, man, well then every time they see a white person, they're like, I got a bad feeling like this person might be racist too, right? Or And the other way around, right? Maybe, you know, you got beat up as a kid by some black kids. And then when you, you get older, every time you see a black person walk by, you're just like a little nervous. It's just emotions. It's just movement in the body um, that's completely irrational. The, the, you, the whole thing is you can't believe it. You can notice it. You have to notice it. How could you not notice an emotion? There's movement in my body. Wow, I notice this is there. But when we start to believe it or we start to judge it or we start to uh, hold on to it, grasp at it or push it away, resist it, this is where we get into trouble, right? And so you can get into trouble with that enchanted feeling, me meaning your, your attraction, right? You're, you, you have this good feeling, towards a particular girl. You can do as a lot of guys do and just let it carry you. And like you said, you forgot yourself. You mentioned a woman before 
uh, you thought it ended there. I wasn't taking care of myself because you let yourself get carried away by the emotion. It's not even her fault. It's your fault. You let your you let the movement in your body become your truth, and then that truth led you down you know a very irrational, erratic, crazy ass path, <laughs> and that's what happens. Uh, it could also happen the other way with a lot of guys who they will have uh, a feeling towards a woman and then they resist it. Like uh, if they have a very puritanical mindset or even, you know, if you're married and you have a, a feeling of you see a woman and you're like, are attracted, you might want to resist it, right? So there's a resistance. What I'm asking you to do is just to notice it. That's the most important thing, right? Because awareness is transformative in, its, in and of itself. Awareness is objective awareness. It's just seeing it, right? See the enchantment for what it really is, which is movement in the body. The only thing that is going to make it more than a movement in the body is the meaning you give to it. So I don't, I don't necessarily think you, think you need to resist it, right? Resist being enchanted. Um, you definitely don't want to dive into it and let it carry you away as it done, is done in the past. The whole idea here is that we've got to be objective about the emotional experiences that we have throughout life. You can't resist emotion. You can't not have emotion. If you have no emotion, you're schizoid, right? That means the body is separated from the mind and you're living in a mind world and therefore there's no, there's no, what, Alexander Lowen would call motility in the body. There's no feeling in the body. There's no life in the body. The body has its life. But what makes a man strong is a man who notices any feeling in the body. Anger, right? There's this guy that was, people were talking about him. One of the red pill guys who was kind of like up in the news a couple weeks ago. Um, what the heck was his name? I don't remember his name, but he... He was on a talk show and some woman brought up something about his past where he was like, you know, doing some weird stuff with his wife and he got angry. He's like, ah, screw you for saying that. Rah! And he's supposed to be like an alpha male red pill guy. What the heck is his name? I'm sure one of you guys remember. So uh, he just showed himself not to be an alpha male, but he didn't get that. He thought by showing his anger. Rah, 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 why'd you say that? I'm a tough guy. How dare you cross me? He thought that in his conception, that's being an alpha male. That's not being an alpha male. That's just as bad as the guy who gets enchanted and starts simping for the, a, a woman, right? Th Jack Murphy. Thank you. I knew one of you guys was going to remember that. I'm going to draw a blank today. Jack Murphy. Yeah, Jack Murphy. He got all angry, right? I met him once at the 21 convention. He seemed like a cool dude, but he exposed himself as a beta male because he let anger, he let that, it's an enchantment. All emotions are an enchantment. Right, whether it be lust or anger, right, whether it be pleasure or pain, right, it's an enchantment. Even pain, physical pain, is an enchantment, right, because it is a physical sensation that screws with your mind, screws with your soul, right. And so you have a pain, and then it makes you cringe or it makes you worried, right. It's the it's the secondary response is the one that we need to be afraid of, not the pain, but how we react to the pain, not the lust but how we react to the lust. Do you see what I'm saying? So there's this, uh, there's a saying, um, st uh, st who says this? Stephen Covey. Stephen Covey says that between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space, you will find your power. A lot of people live life like this, stimulus response. Like their response is synonymous with the stimulus. Like, these are people who are impulsive, right? They don't stop. They don't create space. And so this is just something that I want you guys to recognize. This is the way of being a stoic, right? I know as we are waking up as men, uh, a lot of stoic, stoic philosophy makes sense for men. We're, 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 we're coming out of a stupor where we've been told for many generations that we should be vulnerable and we should feel our feelings and share our feelings and men are supposed to cry and all that. And we did that since the 1970s and look at where it's gotten us, right? Prior to that, you know, the man of the 1950s, he was taught as his grandfather taught him and his father taught him who were, you know, a part of the, a part of the generation that suffered. Uh, they, I think they call it the great generation, right? The generation who suffered through 
uh, the, I think the late 1800s was uh, like some sort of a depression or something. Anyway, I'm not getting these generations right. Probably, I'm sure I'm not. But they were taught, men prior to the 1960s, right? 1960s is when men started to become all emotional, growing our hair, smoking weed, and becoming feminist, right? Well, look at where we are now where 90% of us are simps, right? And divorce rates are through the roof, and women don't respect men, right? Why? Because we've become exactly what they told us to become, enchanted. We're enchanted men. Enchanted men are ugly. It's ugly for men to be enchanted. A man is to be stoic. Once again, that doesn't mean you don't have feelings. It means you create space between stimulus and response. Enchantment is someone who is lost, under a spell, right? You say, I love the way that you use that word, enchantment. And, you know, we could use it in terms of lust, because essentially what you're experiencing right now, that's usually what it is when it comes to a woman, unless we're... Uh, we love them. And look, beyond rational love or anything other than rational love is, well, I can't say this. There's emotional love, but then there's lust, right? And lust and emotion, like I said, are kind of intertwined. They're both physical. Rational is above the body. Spiritual love is like a rational love, right? A love out of principle. This is true love. True, true love is loving out of principle. Um, charity in the Catholic faith, they refer to charity as willing the good of the other as other. In other words, it doesn't matter what you feel about that person. It's your will. It's your choice to do the right thing, thus loving or having charity towards that person. It's not an emotional thing at all, right? Real love is, again, I've said this before and there's a whole video about it. It's not emotional at all. So that enchantment is what we've got to be afraid of. Or not afraid of, sorry. We got to be aware of, right? Fear is enchantment. We got to be aware of, be aware of any kind of enchantment. And that is across the board from the most extroverted to the most introverted to the most, uh, all of the emotions, the whole spectrum. This is why in the book, uh, He, I, which I've referred to by Robert Johnson, where he refers to the story of Parsifal who, um, you know, the story, it's about a young man who leaves his mom and then he meets a mentor along the way, right? It's the hero's journey. And the hero, uh, Gorgomond, I don't know, I think that's his name, the name of the, the wizard warrior that he meets, says, beware of being uh, seduced by the fair maiden. He said, beware of seducing and being seduced by the fair maiden. This is enchantment. And when he says the fair maiden, in a Jungian analytical aspect, you see that as the emotional body. It's not about the fair maiden out there. It never is. It's never about the person out there. It's about what's happening in here. Nobody can make you feel anything. This is important. No one can make you feel anything. We feel, right? You can only say, when I see you, I feel X, Y, Z. You cannot say, you make me feel. Do you ever say this to someone or someone say that to you? Women will say this all the time. You make me feel, fill in the blank. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I can't make you feel anything. Your feeling is yours. That's your response. That's in your body. That belongs to you. You can will a different response, right? Anyway, so I'm, you know, I'm talking a lot here about this enchantment stuff because I think we ought to be aware. So you said, my guess, I guess my real question is where is the balance between taking care of yourself and being enchanted? So you call it taking care of yourself. I call it being objective, being stoic, creating space, being aware of what's happening but not engaged with it. Do you see? I can see that this is happening. And look, I ha it happens to me all the time. And as you get older, you start to recognize your patterns of enchantment. Let me put it this way, right? You start, and this is why they say as you get old, you get stiff. It's, you get wise. And sometimes you can get too wise where you can become, com com become completely stiff. But when you're young, you're not aware of yourself. So you haven't seen your patterns yet enough to know, hey, this is coming. I remember this happening last time, which you're, you're remembering, right? You said that you lost yourself last time. But after a few times, you start, to, you start to really be aware that when a particular stimulus, 
evokes a response or a movement in your body, you say, ah, whoop, I better not do anything right away. Let me stop. Let me slow down. Let me take my time. That's what I, that's the main message that I want to portray in this question is be aware of enchantment because you're falling into it. This is why they say people fall into love because you're slipping. You slip. When you are enchanted, you slip. Always be aware of it. Always be aware of it. It doesn't mean that you don't give yourself over to a woman, especially your wife. It doesn't mean that you don't love your wife with all your heart. It doesn't mean that you don't love your children fully. It means I always have to stay on my feet. I can't be falling, right? What good are you to a woman if you fall? And look, this is weird stuff that I'm saying because even the movie we just watched, I told you guys I watched the movie, all movies, all movies, it don't matter. They always portray men as falling. There's such simps in every single movie. I don't, but it's, you call it social programming, right? Uh, um, it's programming. Psychological program. I forget the word that I was using, but it's, it's conditioning. It's conditioning. They're conditioning us through the media and through the music and through the movies to simp and to fall in love. And this is how the reversal of the gender roles has happened, right? Because men are taught that you need to simp and you need to fall. Social engineering. Thank you, James. So beware of it. Beware of it. I've fallen into that trap because I grew up watching the same movies and listening to the same music as you guys. I'm 42 years old now, so I say, whoa, okay. I recognize that's wrong, but the world is still going to push it. You young men, see it. Don't fall for it. Once again, it's not a matter about being cold. It's about being detached. There's a big difference. Cold means you have no feelings. Detached means I have some feelings right now but I'm not gonna do anything about it. I'm just watching it. I'm being observant of it, you see? So he says, uh, my, real, my real question is balancing between taking care of myself, being stoic, and being enchanted. Don't ever be enchanted. Enchanted means you're, you lost it. He says, or am I supposed to, okay, be enchanted at all? No, don't be enchanted. Furthermore, what can I do that I haven't tried already to find a high value woman here's and this is a question that i think a bunch of people have already asked and you know going through various tips trick tactics are one thing right but those are those are superficial and you can watch a lot of videos on youtube and there are guys that do a great job of telling you where you can go and what you can do to find a woman but if you really absorb what i'm teaching in this program and you allow yourself to be you got to understand something, and I've said this before, and you, I'm sure you understand, but the King Transformation Program is not about turning you into something. It's about stripping away, and when we strip away what is left, being, and so according to the mythological language that we're using right now, the being aspect of a man is his king. Robert Moore describes in many of his lectures that where the king is order ensues this is powerful this is huge stuff where the king is order ensues now it's not the king produces order the king doesn't your inner king doesn't create order that's what your warrior does your warrior goes out there and manipulates the world and creates order and says okay we're going to go to this place and we're going to try this uh th these clothing and we're going to try this way of speaking we're going to try these manipulative tactics like you said with regard to game to see what kind of response that we get that's your warrior getting out there that's a mix between your your three lower bodies right that's a magician who's thinking okay i gotta figure out you know analytics about how this is going to happen uh it's your lover's desire it's your lover's will to want to get out there and do this thing because of a lust and it's your warrior who says okay we're going to stick to the plan fellas we're going to get this done the king is not asked is not in, in involved in any of that the king is, because the king doesn't think, the king doesn't do, the king doesn't feel, the king is. And if we allow ourselves to sit in our isness, everything that is for us will be attracted to us. Now, it doesn't mean that you sit and you do nothing, but you allow yourself to simply be as an observer. Here's another way to kind of like bring it full circle with regard to the enchantment thing. That, uh, that stoic way that observant way that objective way that i mentioned before with regard to 
being careful about enchantment, that's practicing your inner king. The thing is, when you're in that way, when you're in that, that being state, it's not that you don't do anything, but all action is taken from a place of stillness. So you're asking me, you know, is there anything I haven't tried in order to find a high value woman? I say, try leaving it alone altogether. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed that when you're trying for something, it's a struggle, but the minute you leave it alone, it comes to you? Better yet, have you ever noticed that when you're looking for a girlfriend, you're looking for a woman, it seems like they're, you know, like cats, right? You can't come up to a cat very easily. They just scatter, right? Somebody who's needy for wanting to pet cats, right? Oh, there's a kitty, right? Remember, I used to watch this cartoon, Looney Tunes. It was like Looney Tunes. I don't remember. It was like baby Looney Tunes when I was a kid. And there was this girl, uh, a little girl. Anyway, she loved cats. God, cats, cats. And she would run after animals. And cats. The animals would scatter. But do you notice that if you sit and you just chill? I have a cat that's a scaredy cat. What am I? I have one cat. And the cat's a scaredy cat. It's scared of me. I walk in the room and she scatters. But if I sit down and she walks in the room, she'll sniff my leg a little bit and then she'll come up on my lap. But if I want to pet her, she's gone. Life works, and women work that way, in that way in a lot of ways, but life works that way. All of life works that way in that the more you try, the more you have diminishing returns. You ever looking for like your keys? This happened to me the other day. I was looking for my water bottle. I look at my water bottle and I'm like, I got to find my water bottle. I'm going all over the place and I'm like, stop, stop. The water bottle will show up literally 10 seconds later. I, I just, I stopped, I let it go. And then I was like, I know where my water bottle is. I literally walked into the room. And I was like, there it is. Boom. I stopped. My, my wife and my kids watched me do this too because they were like, you know, the, I was getting anxious and I was making them anxious. I was like, have you seen my water bottle? Anybody seen my water bottle? And then I realized what I was doing and I stopped, you know, and they were kind of just looking at me and I was like, and that's it. And then, I, and then it just popped into my head and that's where it is. I know this is not tactical. I know I'm not giving you strategies for finding a woman. I'm asking you to be aware of your way of being, right? Ralph Waldo Emerson says every action is measured by the sentiment from which it proceeds. What is your sentiment? If you're from a needy, searching, grabbing sentiment, just like the cats, they're going to scatter. But if you're just chill, Life orders itself around you. Life makes itself come to you. When you just chill, you know exactly where to go. You say, where do I go to find a high value woman? I can't answer that for you. But if you slow down, you stop, you stop all the crazy thinking, all the feeling about it and all the, the grabby, grabbing attitude, all of a sudden one day you're gonna be sitting there and you're gonna be like, my cousin's best friend. She's been under my nose the entire time. Like, I didn't notice because I'm so busy. <laughs> and then I'm sitting here one day and she pops into my mind. I, you know, I made that up. But a woman that like is, un, is just living, is right, flying under your radar, but she's there the whole time. It's like she's been, just like my water bottle. It was there the whole time. So there could literally be the woman of your life, the woman that you're to, to spend the rest of your life with right under your nose, bro. She might be right under your nose. You're not even looking. You have no idea because you're so busy doing this. But the minute you go, pop, there she is. Try that. All right, bro. Hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.